All right. So I think we are going to start. So we gave two minutes for the people who was going to attend the session from Coffee Break. And we are going to start. First of all, I, I wanted to say to you, thank you for joining us today. Really happy to see all of you here. I uh, really appreciate that. And today, we are going to talk about how to build relationships with the clients. And, and, and the reason for this talk, because relationships, almost the most important part of our life. Relationships uh, with the clients, with our families, friends, employees, and teammates. So we are going to talk about this because good and healthy relationships, they, are, they, they drive our businesses. So my name is Alex Shedrov. I came here from Ukraine. Uh, I work at the FFW as a team lead and architect, and also we are building open-wide distribution, so potentially you may heard about that something. So I'm architect of this project, and I have on, on blog, so in case if you would like to contact me with the data, I write some articles about technologies and everything that is around me there. Hello, my name is Dmitra. Uh, I'm really happy to be here today. I'm Drupal developer, and I'm really happy to have a chance to work with Alexander on OpenY distribution. And currently, I work as technical lead at root.ua. Thank you for coming for this session. We'll do our best to make the session interesting for you, but let's set up the right expectation from the beginning. We are technical guys, so probably all the stuff we are talking about will go from technical perspective. At this presentation, we'll talk about the common problems and issues uh, which faces nearly each development team while project implementation. We'll guide you through each phase of this really wonderful process and try to share our experience and recommendations. And uh, eventually, and hopefully with your help, we'll find the best solutions for the most common problems. So just close your eyes, relax, and imagine you have get a fantastic client who wants to implement his next project with your team. So let the fun begin. Yeah, and, and all we know that the most funny things and fun begins from first phase, that's the sales discovery and the estimate. So we're going to start from this phase. But first of all, I would like to ask a few questions. So first one, who is the client and what kind of business he does? Uh, what does the client want to build? So eventually, which product you are going to build, how it should look like, or something like this. Or why does the client build the solution? So what is like purpose of this solution? And who will be the end user of this solution? And how the client build this solution? So in case if for your client and your project, you do not have an answer at least to one of these questions. So you are in a big troubles because this is the beginning of the project. And in case if you do not have background information, you may, you may get like, different expectations from your client. And let's, let's take a look at the example. So we are going to build a sport car, but eventually we've got something like this. So let's, let's, let's think what, what will be the level of frustration for our client because he wanted the sport car, but get something like this. So because of that, it's really important to focus on the beginning of the projects, like sales, estimates, and stuff like that from the beginning. So first, first step to do that, it's listen, ask, and analyze. So that's three simple words. And you may think, like, this is so obvious. What, what are you talking about? So that's, that's, we are doing that. But yes, this is simple. But not all of us are doing this. We all know that we should really focus on the estimates. We should really focus on the discovery and sales. However, not all of us doing this. And I really encourage you to do that. So we can have uh, plenty of meetings with clients 
we should find appropriate questions in order to get more information and then we can analyze this. And this will give us like big vision of the project, big vision of the client's project, what exactly he wants to get and how, how we are going to move forward. And this will get you through all these phases. So remember, we are only in the first phase, beginning of the project, and big vision will, 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 will kind of inspire you to get through the all phases. And based on this, you can circle back to client and recommend something. You haven't started the project yet. You do not have like budgets, money, estimates, deadlines, but if you're at the beginning, circle back with client, recommend something like reduce functionality or uh, remove some functionality or uh, like reduce costs for, for the project. So using that, you will show that you really care about the project. And all we know, when client feels that you care about project, you will do your best in order to finish it and finish it with good quality. But the next step, next thing that we are using in our company with our clients, that it's, it's important and, and it's, it's hard to implement, yes, but it's important to involve the whole team during the estimation process, during sales, bring your sales department, technical leads, architects, and even developers, so why not? Because if you can get the whole team for the sales and for the discovery and estimates, and the same team will start this project and will work towards the end of the project, that's, that will be the ideal solution because they will have a vision, they will have the all background, they will have everything in order to do it and implement it successfully. In case if you have separate department of architects who are doing estimation, and then they transfer their knowledge to actual team who will implement this, and there is big gap between those two teams. So just try to involve everyone to this process. And the reason for that, because everyone will feel the responsibility. So everyone will feel responsibility of this project, and everyone will do their best in order to like implement it with a great quality, with a great, uh, like, f without failed deadlines and stuff like that. Because when I feel responsibility, I will do my best to, like, to finish that with with a great quality. And also, if your agency, if your agency and provide designs, uh, try to bring everyone to design sessions. Like, in case you can get end user to this session. That will be perfect because end user might provide so valuable feedback for the designs because they eventually will use it, not you, not client itself. Their customers, their users will, will use the design. So try to get this feedback from them. And if client can provide this, that, that will be great. But let's say you implemented all these steps. Uh, you like listened, asked, analyzed, and all that, that, that thing. But in case if you price your project, so you provided wrong estimates or small estimates, your project probably will be failed. You will go over budget. Client will be frustrated because you will ask for more money. So it's really important to price the project right from the beginning. And in order to do that, try to do a review. So just ask developers to review estimates of the architect. Ask other architects to review the estimates. Ask like sales, PMs, and QAs to review the estimates because as more people can just take a look and review, uh, as closer your estimates will be to the reality. But of course, there may be some gap between estimates from developer and architect, but this might be fixed just by communication between them. So you can decide which exactly, how, how many hours you need to implement this or that thing. But in case if, let's say, you failed completely, you screwed up the project, fail estimates, over budget, like day to our like, daily basis life, yeah? Failed project, over budget. There is one magical thing that, that might help you to proceed with your client and save your collaboration. It's called empathy. It's, it's something magical. It's like chemistry between you and client, and it's, it's it's impossible to describe that, however it exists. Believe me, we've had, we've had a lot of empathy between our teams and clients, so it's important to build an empathy. It, won't, it might help you in case if you provide a wrong estimate. You have no background of project, so you completely screwed out the project, and 
that thing, that chemistry, empathy will help you to proceed with collaboration. Your client will not leave you. And just, just, just remember that most of the projects, they are failed from the beginning. So it's really important to focus on this phase, like discovery, estimates, and sales. So you will protect yourself from, from failure eventually. So congratulations, you've got the project. <laughs> Let's start implementing it. Everything is going smooth. The client is happy. The list of planned features is really long and exciting. Sales managers were so good and sold absolutely everything. But every time you're reading through the list of planned features, your heart starts beating really fast. And why? It's because limited budget. And here you have to relax because every budget is limited. So let's talk about how should we behave, behave in this situation. And as it appears, Pareto law makes sense here. Almost 80% of troubles are caused by 20% of features. Just imagine this awesome header with complex navigation, or this really awesome footer which changes its color or structure depending on some logic. And these features could be potential time killers, and they give too little business value for your customer and the project. And accordingly, only 20%, small percent of features make really, really business value for your customer. And just imagine small, gray, tiny, hidden somewhere web form. Surprise, this form really makes money for your, for your client. So right from this moment, you should think like your client thinks. You are not developer now. So start by sorting your features by business value. And do not make assumptions here. Ask your client to help you. And after that, you'll be able to pinpoint the most critical parts of your application. Start discuss this parts, feel the pain of your client, try to fix essential problems, and you know, if the client will understand that you understand his business, he will be happy. And happy client is a client, is a client, is a negotiations. And that's what we want. So right now, you are full of energy and fire. You'll make awesome project. You'll make really awesome project. You'll create documentation for each feature. Okay. You'll make tests for everything. No, eventually you'll open source your modules. But it seems your team burns a lot of time for ideal solutions. And it's look like a problem. And We'll do everything right starting from this project. Let's be more realistic. Your new project won't be ideal. Statistically, your new project will be at least 80% similar to previous one. Otherwise, you will break the deadlines. So think twice before changing your workflow or tools or environments, uh, our point is that single but really stable step further is way better than quickly and risky movements. So do evolution but not revolution. And it's always a good idea just to, just to build your project. Do not look for ideal solutions. A good software appears through the implementing 
iterative improvements. It's impossible to create something ideal from scratch. That's how OpenY distribution appeared. We've built really cool stuff for the first YMCA project. Some of the features have been reused in the next projects and eventually after polishing, refactoring, the code was committed to the distribution. So just do it now, build your project. And probably the finishing your project in time will be ideal goal for you. Yeah, ideal projects and solution. How many promises we've made when we started projects like test coverage and stuff like that. But in addition, let's let's think about this in a little bit different perspective. Let's let's say that the client doesn't ask your questions. So it's just joining meetings, say yes, 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 and just left meetings, so no questions from client. Or Client reviews the demo too quickly, so just a few minutes, he says, everything fine, buddy, yeah, that's good, let's go ahead and deploy that. Or the client doesn't point on backs, so that happened sometime. So based on those three things, we can make an assumption that client doesn't participate in your project, so he's not proactive. And I personally call these clients like a sleepy client, so they are they are hanging around, they are joining to the meetings, they are trying to do something, but eventually they are not kind of interested in this project and they leverage responsibility from themselves to you and we all do not want to have this responsibility, right? So it, and it, it doesn't encourage the team to work on this project, so stuff like that. But maybe there are just have some blockers on the road to actively participate in the project. So let's say they have blockers, like they have no environments or they have no understanding how to test this or that feature or they are new on the project. So how, how, how much time you've had in transition on client side and there is some boarding period so new people do not know what they are going to do or they do not feel responsibility or they just too shy to ask you that they have a blockers in their rod. So just ask them, so simple, simple sentence. Do you have any blockers or problems with our team and testing our product? So in case if you ask this, they may, they may just say, yes, I have, I do not understand the environment setup. I do not understand how it works, this feature and that feature. But if you do not ask, you, it, it may bring a lot of problems like at the end of the project and eventually ruin the relationships with client. And another thing that might also help you to encourage client to participate more, that's the early demo. Whenever you have something to show, just show it. Even in case if it looks terrible without design, but it works and it brings some business value. So your meetings might look like this. You just show the demo, there are some bugs appears like in software, we're working in IT, you're trying to hide them, but that's fine. We all make bugs. So world is not perfect. Just see, there is there is cool cool thing that you can see. We will fix this in the next release. That works, that works kind of, that's good excuse that you will, you will finish this and fix this in the next release. Coupled with early demo, we are always trying to start user acceptance testing period. That's the period when client tests his features and, and, and approve some of them. So we're trying to start this from the beginning. So when some feature is ready, we just send it to client for testing and signing off. We do not wait for the end of the project because eventually it might bring a lot of problems. Let's say you've built 15 cool features and you was waiting for the UAT period. You said, all right, we will allocate one month before the project launch. We will send everything to client. He will take a quick look, share with his colleagues. And eventually you get a huge spreadsheet with things that should be fixed or with bug reports and no one can take a vacation, seek leave, go to cinema with kids and family and wife. They should just work that the whole month in order to fix everything. That's not gonna work in long-term perspective because everyone will completely burned out. So just starting user acceptance testing from the beginning is like beneficial thing because you will, you will go like 
smoothly through the project and there will not be that big bag of things to do at the end of the project. And also this, this will make everyone excited. So whenever you show something on, on your meeting, so everyone will write a meeting for you. Like let's say you have a weekly meeting. So client will just, will be excited to, to join these meetings because you, ha you always have something to show him. It's, just, it's, it's not just conversation between you and him. It's like you show the results and they actually see something that they are paying for. So they actually give you money for that. And in case if you do not do that, it might lead to unexpected results, as I mentioned. So at the end of the project, you had to work 24 hours per day, no sleep, no like pizza, just coffee, work, and stuff like that. That's not what we want, actually, right? So just make sure that, 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 that you engage the client, you go smoothly with the project. And one more challenge uh, that can happen uh, is frustrated and bored developers. And it's obviously that the project can't go smoothly with demotivated team. So let's speak about no patient problem and how to avoid it in the future. Just look at these guys. Uh, believe me, these guys will be frustrated eventually. Money isn't always makes us happier. And it's our goal, it's your goal, to make each team member uh, understand that he should have really higher goal than just earning more money and doing less. And it's our goal and our duty to help and to find and identify this goal. And learning some, something new is really helping here because every developer uh, like to, to learn new things and probably uh, he can learn framework subsystem, new design pattern, no, even new JavaScript library, but be careful. Uh, the goal isn't learning itself. Developer should understand that the goal is successful adoption of the technology on the project. So it really helps. Also, you should try pair programming sessions. Uh, this session can help to solve really challenging problems, but also they help the team to be engaged. And try to set up global missions. For example, on YMCA projects, we had some missions like, we are helping people to start healthy life, or just we are helping children to learn swimming, and it really working. And learning the business of your client will help you to identify these uh, missions for your particular project. And of course, you have to create proper issue tickets. Just move this button 10 pixels right and make it green. It's really demotivating issue. Always leave a space for developer to think. And you should include three items at your tickets. Like the first, why we are doing this ticket? What should we do in this ticket? And little, little description how we should do it. Help your developer to think and make some proposals. And obviously, you as a team lead, have to like your project because absence of passion will burn out you guys. Be careful. Yeah, and we, we are still at the beginning of the project, you know, and there are so many problems. So, and there is another one. Let's, let's imagine that, that you didn't ask the client which way of cooperation is comfortable for them. You just started the project, you are using your setup of tools that you usually use for the clients because that's like historical thing, you are using them. Or you didn't demonstrate, you didn't have a demo or a proposal how you would like to work with them. 
So eventually it may lead to some kind of providing uncomfortable services for the client. So good example, let's say you are sitting on an uncomfortable chair. So you may sit for five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, one hour, two hours, but eventually you will be happy to stand up, have a walk, and sit down on a comfortable couch, right? The same may be with a client. In case if you, if you created great product, you haven't filled the deadlines, you haven't had it over budget, but you provided uncomfortable services, eventually even, even if you've had great, great team, client will be happy to leave you and find another agency to work with because the whole process wasn't uncomfortable. He was, he was like, he, he, he didn't feel that it was comfortable at all. So now let's think what good service is because there are so many definitions. So for me, good service is when you walk into the restaurant or shop or a Starbucks, you do something there, order a coffee or buy a new T-shirt and you walk out from this place and you have a good feeling and you have a smile. So it, it means that it was a good service. So the same I think, the same I think should, should happen with clients. And solution is pretty simple. Just ask your client which way of cooperation would prefer. Maybe they would prefer emails instead of Basecamp or they would prefer have on-site meetings instead of using GoToMeetings, uh, GoToMeeting or Skype, or they just would like to use RSC or ICQ or something like that. So just ask, no assumptions, and they will tell you how to do that. Be flexible with that. And also explain how you work, explain the full cycle. We are at the beginning of the project, explain that so they will have an understanding of the process that you are bringing them to. And the last, it's kind of the last piece of that, of comfortable services, that it's really important to define roles and responsibilities from the beginning. Include there everyone, client, your team, some third party vendors that you're working with or third party services. It's really important that everyone knows that what they should do and they feel responsibility. So good example. Music, uh, musicians and rock, uh, rock bands, jazz bands, so just musicians. They always know when they should start playing the drums, when the guitar players should, be, should start playing, when the vocals should be started, and that creates rhythm, vibe, and melody, so you feel it. In case if someone will, will, will start not in the right time, you, you will say that this song, I, I do not like this song. The same we should think about our team, so everyone should, should, should really should really know when they should start doing something, when they should stop doing something. So just make sure that everyone knows and just feel yourself like a, like a rock band and you will create great projects and relationships with clients. So we are doing great and we are at the middle of the project. Let's face new issues. Sometimes the client requests the feature that has no implementation in the real world. The client really understands how should it work, but no one understands how should be implemented this feature. And it's really a problem, no real world example. Uh, the development can take a lot of time, but no one guarantees that the client will accept the solution. And the fair example of this problem could be third-party service integration. And proof of concept and MVP will help you. It's really simple, like one, two, three. So the first step, just pinpoint the most critical parts. The second step, just quickly implement the feature. Yes, you have to write dirty and quick, quick code. The goal is just show something to the client because early demo will help your client to understand basically what he wants. And after you show him something, you'll see your client will start, uh, will start participate in your development and probably will help you to move in the right 
direction. And of course, everybody lies. Do not, do not trust third party services. We had an experience when only half of documented features were really working. So don't rely on such services. And sometimes you have to ask the client how to implement some feature. And I think you should provide two or more proposals. Let's have a simple example. You ask client, what kind of button do you like, blue or red? The client will tell you, I like blue button. But what if you ask, what kind of button do you like? First of all, the client will wait two or three days, and then he will ask, uh, he will tell you, I like big button. So the idea, never ask open questions. Uh, my point that simple questions will lead to simple answers. And of course, it's a good idea to set up workshops with your client and probably uh, pair programming sessions. Yes, it's not a joke. There is a guy who was sitting in pair programming session with the client and eventually they got a result. So it works. Yeah, yeah, we've had that example and a few more examples when we were working with YMCA. And actually, a client was in the meeting. He, he brought there a few trainers who were working at the gym. And together, we were sitting there and trying to write some code and identify how we should eventually create an integration with third-party services that those trainers are using. And eventually, in, in case if we haven't had that, we've, we would spend like one month just for back and forth emails between us. So it's really cool that we can sit together and do that. But also in the, in the middle phase, so we are already in the middle phase, we went successfully through the beginning, and in this, at this phase, there might be some things that can be identified only during this phase. So let's say that you have a communication that is going only through one single person, or your team works some kind of vacuum. So they, they at the end of the day, so for, for me, measurement of working in vacuum is that developer, at the end of the day, they will say that I've completed three tasks in Jira. But for me, like personally, as a team lead, they should say, I've completed three tasks. In the first one, I like make a blue button that will make a lot of money for the client. In the second one, I completely redesigned the homepage and stuff like that. So which is not measurement that you just completed your day-to-day -day tasks or something like that. You should really help and care about project and client. Or your team, doesn't have a path moving forward. So they are just working and working, no development, no learning, no, nothing like that. So it means that you may have communication bottleneck or communication gap that should be fixed eventually. And the first step to do that, just remove overhead from that single person who handles this communication. So that could be, in most cases, that's the PM, project manager. And I think that in case if project manager handles all communications, it's like, it's like secretary, I don't know, because everyone, like team leads, architects, and even developers, they, are, they, they want to talk with client directly. They, 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 they really need that. Of course, there are some examples that developers are introverts. Yeah, we all know that, and they are going to work on the code. However, it's really important to talk with client directly for the whole team. Let's say, and ex let's, let's take a look at the example. You have a bottle of Coke in your hand. It's closed, and you have inside it a lot of energy. You just shake it a few times, you remove the bank from the bottle, and that crazy energy go outside, goes outside of the bottle. So the same will happen in case if you will allow your team talk with the client, because they have a lot of energy, they have a lot of pain, uh, 
in most cases, developers, they feel that pain, not PM feels the pain of integration with third party services. So developers do that. So they, they, they really, they will be inspired and encouraged to work even better when they talk directly with client. And so the question, who is, who is more important, your employees or the client? What do you think, guys? Who is more important? Your employees. Employees, employees. No clients, no projects, no employees. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, maybe that's a good point. However, yeah, I think that both are important. So you should really care about everyone. It's in case if you will care only about clients, your developers will be upset and they will deliver some shit at the end of the project. In case you will care only about developers, your client will be upset and he will leave you alone at the end of the project and go to another agency. So you should really care about both clients, employees, because let's remember we have magical thing called empathy. When you care about everyone and just show this to the whole team that you care, it will get you closer to this chemistry between you and your client. And Another thing that will, that will help you to create empathy, that's the person who can help with client with everything. Of course, not, he, he's not going to deliver pizza or clean the apartment. However, he can help with, with the questions that are pretty close to your expertise and area. Even in case if they are not related to your project, just try to help client or just to say, I'm not an expert in this, however, there is someone or there is a link. Just do not leave them alone with the problem. Just because this will, this will really show that you care about them. And of course, you shouldn't be 24 seven help. You shouldn't be exploited because in some cases this happens, we've had that experience. But just try to be Try to think as a client, try to help them because empathy is really a magical thing. And kind of in order to summarize everything that I just said about communication, let your client care about their relationships with client. Not the PM responsible for that. Not the separate department responsible for that. Not the individual guy with the title, kind of client's relationship manager responsible for that. Your team responsible for that, not only through product or code, through services, through services that you are providing. And we almost all providing services, so just let your team to care about that. And we all do internal retrospectives. Retrospective meetings at the end of the sprints, at the end of the projects. Bring and involve the client to provide feedback about your team, about your teammates, and of course share them, because they've had a couple of examples when client provided the feedback. But that feedback just like didn't didn't get to the developers at all. So ask your client to provide feedback because this will actually inspire your team. Good feedback will will inspire your team. Bad feedback will inspire your team even more than good feedback. Believe me. So because when you hear something bad, you will get what I will do that from the next project even better. So but good feedback inspires as well. So you can kind of allow yourself to like, take a bottle of beer and hang out the whole evening because you've got a good feedback from a client. And eventually, we are at the most challenging part of any project. Let's talk about what might happen just before the launch. Sometimes something goes wrong. <laughs> and it's totally OK when something goes wrong. Uh, it could be uh, too optimistic estimates or broken deadlines or problems with third-party services. But the main question here, should we talk to the client about that? And we are pretty sure we should, because transparency will help uh, to make stress less and to make process, process more effective. So just talk to your client and under promise and over deliver. What does it mean? Uh, basically, breaking promises will make our client frustrated. And again, 
delivering more than clients expects will make him happy. So in other words, no one likes to pay more, but everyone likes to get more. So let's have a rule, just promise less and do more. But the question, how can we achieve that? The answer is simple, just always add some buffers to your estimates. It will help you. And sometimes we do too optimistic estimates. And I think we should talk to the client about that. There is a really big chance that the client will, will adjust the budget. Yes, there is a chance that the client will tell you there is a contract, there is duties, we have no money, and blah, 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 blah. But eventually, there is a good point. Now your client knows that there is a problem. And he is ready for this problem. And the same thing should be applied to failed deadlines. It's always better to fail deadline for single feature, but not the whole project. So just talk to your client, and probably he will remove some features to finish the project in time. And this slide is probably the most important slide from my part of presentation. Uh, indeed, the deepest need people have is for a sense of control. Not control, but a sense of control. So give this feeling to your client. And believe me, he will forgive you broken deadlines and even over budget. And I forgot <laughs> really cool trick. Uh, always say yes to your client. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, let's have a, a simple example. Uh, could you make this button green? Yes, sure. We will do this button green, but please contact our sales to make a SLA agreement. And obviously, do not charge your client for a simple solutions. Yeah, and all those things, you know, you know, all those things they get us through the almost all phases. So when it had us only the most exciting things, the project launch, you know, that's magic feeling when you're almost done with the project. You just imagine how you will lie down on the beach, have some hita or stuff like that. So that's I'm excited about this part of the project. Are you? So, but there is always but, you know, but. Uh, usually I hear that question almost at the end of the project, so client asks when and where I can enter my content in case if you launch a new website and you haven't, do not have a migration or you have just portion of migration. Or the client doesn't understand how the website will be launched at all. So not all clients, they are, they, they are not tech savvy. So. There are some use cases when client does not technical details and overall process. Or the client doesn't know how and where to test to perform the final testing and stuff like that. And this, this might screw up the whole impression of your work from first phase in case if you did it really great, the first phase sales and estimates, the, the overall project. But at the end of the project, you may screw up your project in case if you do this phase in the wrong way. But there is one thing that might help you. The first one, that you can create the Go Live checklist. You can create Go Live checklist, put every, every step in this checklist so that could be spreadsheet with steps like check performance, check perform load testing, disable devil module, check status page, configure write directs and stuff like that. And make sure that everyone is assigned to some tasks. For example, architects or team leads, they can perform some high level tasks. Client might change the DNS. Client might contact to, let's say, Acquia to perform some load testing and stuff like that. So everyone is responsible for for that process as well. And explain this process in the really simple words. So example, 
your architect or team lead on meeting with clients uh, will answer to the question how the launch will, will going to happen. He will answer, oh, I'm going to log into the server using SSH and I will execute Drush update DB using alias. Then I will make sure that Varnish is up and running and anonymous users are hitting Varnish and stuff like that. What the heck are you doing? So you should really answer to this question that I will make a data backup, then I will make sure that code is up to date on the production environment, and I will make sure that your website is, uh, will, will, will take big, uh, perform, uh, big loading on your website. So just in simple words, instead of these technical things that he's not interested in. And in order to explain this in simple words, visualize it. So we have great tool, we can visualize everything using diagrams. Here is one example how we do that. We split out the whole process of development of new website in three simple phases. So we develop the platform. That's the phase where we set up content types, workflow for working with the content. When, once we finished, we just say to the client, so we've deployed to this environment. Now you can start working with the content, and in case there is a migration, you should put and freeze your current website. When this phase is done, we just launch the website. We say, like, we are going to launch the website, identify date, and stuff like that. Here is an example of go live timeline. So we usually split out the go live in three phases, pre-go live, go live, and post-go live. In the first phase, we go through that checklist, perform some load testing, security updates, and stuff like that. Go live, that's just changing the DNS. In most cases, that's pretty simple. And in case if you have write direct, so you should make sure that everything works. And post-go live, we just check that DNS, is up and running, so we check DNS propagation and performance, analytics, and stuff like that, and we are done. And client always understand that diagram, so it's, it's, it's really simple. But after that, it's always important to make sure that client knows how to set up, uh, so which environment they should use, because before lunch, you have the first setup of environments. After, you always treat production as a primary environment. So make sure that they understand that in case if they will delete something from production, it will never appear there or like you have to do some work in order to get it there. So make sure that they understand that. And always propose the post go live support. Make sure that they know the channel, channels for communication in case of something urgent appeared on the website. They know how to apply hotfixes, let's say, they cannot accept payment. So that's that's huge problem. So they should have someone uh, whom they can contact to fix that. So make sure to, to do that. And congratulations, we finally launched the project. So we went through all the phases and we launched, we launched the project. So we are good to go. We can hang out to take our wife and kids, go to the mountains and just enjoy our lives. So we are done with this. So we went through all phases. We launched the project. And if we take a look and we, if we get back to our first diagram where we outlined all those five phases. So we've done with sales estimates. We've done with the beginning. We've done with the middle phase before lunch and lunch. But our goal is to just connect those two phases. So that client will actually start a new project with you start a new contract with you, build something new, build some new feature, build some new breakthrough functionality for the website. And you might just sit here and, and think, so I've spent one hour with those guys. They were talking about so obvious things, like I, 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 I know all these recommendations. Yes, we all know them, but we all not use them we may use some of them, but not all. And in the result, if you will use all of them, this will bring like, your business to completely new level. This will create empathy between you and the client, between your teammates and the client. And relationships based on trust, they will drive your team, they will encourage everyone, they will drive your company performance, 
healthier and stuff like that. So just start to using them because we are using them and we are happy. So we are happy, clients happy, happy clients, easy clients. So we, we all really want that. And I wish you to build relationships with the client wisely. So just think about it. Not think only about the product or not think only about like budgets and estimates and stuff like that. Think about clients. Just take a few minutes to think how does the client feel. Maybe they have problems. Maybe they are concerned with something. So relationships are really important. And remember that cooperation with well-established partners, it's always more efficient, beneficial, favorable, happier, healthier, and blah, 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 and stuff like that, and less painful. So we all encouraged when we work with the cool clients, when we develop awesome projects. So I think we, are, we should always work in order to convert the clients to partners and to establish good relationships to have more and more and more project with them. So basically, in other words, uh, the terms the client and the customers are both wrong. The, the right term is partner. So let's build partnership. Let's do not build projects. Let's build partnership. We've just shared our recipes to make our partners happy. We truly believe you have your own recipes and tips and tricks. Please share if you have them. Thank you. Yep. Yep, and there is one more thing. So, oh, sorry, that was not my face. That was Steve Jobs. So, uh, there is one thing that I wanted to just briefly mention. I have two sessions on, on, on this DrupalCon. Just imagine how busy my last two or three weeks are. So they are crazy. So I, I would really appreciate if you will come tomorrow to the same room, 1045, where we'll talk about uh, continuous integration testing that, we will, that we've built for OpenWide Distro. So it's gonna be DevOps track. If you're interested, welcome. We'll be happy to see you here. And also contribution sprints are Friday in case you would like to be part of Drupal to contribute somehow, designs, management, not only code. So join us. Thank you very much. That's the question, uh, time for questions and answers. And please, please, please evaluate our session. So there is a link. If you think that you have valuable feedback, just leave there a message so we will, we will know what do you think about our session. So thank you very much, questions and answers. Any questions? Questions? There is a microphone if you would like to ask questions. Please, at least one. Or just share. Or you can just share your recipes on the Facebook or probably on the comments to this presentation. It would be great. Thank you. Yeah, if you have no questions, there is information if you'd like to catch up on some things. So thank you very much for joining us today. No, thank you.